So, um, but actually, we're going to stick with, the, uh, as we move into our sermon today, we're going to stick with our musical theme, and um, we're going to start with a, a game of, of Name That Tune. I'm going to play about 15 seconds of a song, and I want you to tell me the name of the song, but, but wait till the end. Give everybody a chance. All right, this isn't, if it's like uh, Jeopardy. If you try to buzz in too quick, you're out. So um, we'll, we'll listen to this. William, William Tell Overture. Or the Lone Ranger. Who says Lone Ranger? Who says William Tell Overture? Who says William Tell Overture Fourth Movement? <laughs> right? It, it, well, for my, in my heart, it, it, it is the, the Lone Ranger theme. Is anyone here, anyone remember, you're old enough to have, been, have watched the Lone Ranger? I, I, was, I, I was obsessed with the Lone Ranger as a kid. For me, it came on at like six in the morning on Saturday mornings. So it went Lone Ranger, Cisco Kid, Smurfs in my world. That's, that's cowboy, cowboy blue. That's, that was my morning on Sundays. And I was so obsessed when I was a kid that one of my favorite things to do, my favorite places to go as a kid, my, my parents would take us sometimes to a place in Indianapolis called the Paramount Music Palace. And the Paramount Music Palace was a pizza restaurant. I think it says like pizza and things because my brother didn't eat pizza. So I know they had chicken. And they had imported, I guess you'd say, a 1930s Wurlitzer pipe organ from a movie theater in Oakland, California. Actually, it was the Paramount Movie Theater in Oakland, California. They brought it in, and you could go down and write any song you wanted on a scrap of paper and then put it in a, like a, you know, a glass globe ball, uh, bowl, and the, the organist would then reach in and pick out, you know, and it was like, you know, you're at the, the hockey game or something, you know. He would play whatever, and the coolest thing ever was when your song got picked, man. You felt like big stuff at that point, and every time I went, I would toss in, the, and I would write, The Lone Ranger, and my mom, who was a, a music person, would roll her eyes and tell me it's the William Tell Overture Fourth Movement, and I would say, no, it's The Lone Ranger. And I would write it, and I'd toss it in there, and we could not leave. Like, I would not let us leave that place until my song came up on the organ. Like, my experience of dinner and that experience was not complete without the fourth movement of the William Tell Overture. It was like there was this hole in my heart. My soul knew something was missing in my life until that song finally played. You know, I even had a, the, a Lone Ranger playset that I loved. I actually found online, this was it. This, it had the two six shooters and even had like the silver bullets painted on the holster on the belt and a red bandana and a badge and the black mask. But you know what it didn't have? A white hat. You know why? Because the hat was sold separately. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I didn't get the hat. And so as much as I loved running around my neighborhood pretending to be the Lone Ranger, I could never fully be the Lone Ranger. There was always something missing. My heart, again my soul, knew that I was incomplete because I didn't have what? The hat. I've had a lot of moments in my life since my Lone Ranger days where I felt like something was missing, where I didn't feel complete. Like there's this hole in my heart. This was the 80s, and it couldn't be filled by you. <laughs> couldn't be filled by a white hat or even an organ playing the William Tell Overture. This is empty. I don't know if you've been in that place in your life sometime where you didn't feel complete. And maybe you couldn't put your finger on it. Maybe you didn't know exactly what it was like, but something was missing in your life. Some of us today are probably there. Something is missing in my life. And to be honest, I think for a lot of us, maybe it was that missing something that drew us to Christ. 
I think we're designed that way, right? None of us are whole in and of ourselves. None of us are complete in and of ourselves. None of us are fully alive until we are alive with Christ. But, but so often, in, instead of turning to Jesus, we, we turn to other things, right? We turn to other people, other philosophies, ideologies, theologies, trying to fill that hole, that emptiness. I mean, it happens to the best of us. And as we're in the, the book of Colossians this month, it happened to the people in Colossae, the Christians in Colossae. It's why Paul, actually, it's why he wrote them this letter. And he addresses this missing something and our tendency to search for it in all the wrong places. He addresses that in the second chapter of his letter. And so this is Colossians 2, and it's verses 6 through 15. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness In him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by putting off the body of the flesh and the circumcision of Christ when you were buried with him in baptism. You were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave all our trespasses. Erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that we can find our fullness in you, that whenever it feels like something is missing in our lives, we can find it here in your presence, surrounded by your spirit, surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. And so, Lord, may your Son witness to our hearts today. Speak to each and every one of us. Fill the holes in our souls. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. If you were here last week when we started our time in Colossians, you might remember that Paul started this letter with with a holy attaboy, like an epic attaboy to the people of Colossae. He knew that as new Christians in a new church, there would be struggles. And this was particularly true considering the fact that their leader, Epiphras, had had left them. The one who brought them to Christ, the one who shared the gospel with them, led them, had gone to share the gospel with other people in other places, to lead other communities, and they were like a bike without what? Training. You guys are like VBS kids. They were like a bike without? There, you were here last week. I saw you, some of you. And as even some of the people that weren't here last week were said training wheels the second time. They got it. (laughs) And as part of his encouragement, Paul shared a beautiful early hymn of the church with them to remind them that Christ is all in all, that he is the creator. That's the beautiful. Sometimes people call Colossians like the the cosmic letter because it puts Christ at the head of the entire universe. The head of the church is also the head of the universe. There is nothing on earth, great or in heaven, that is greater than than Christ, God in Christ. And so now as Paul shifts into the next section of his letter, as he gets down to brass tacks, he begins with one more encouragement, which I I really feel like serves as the heart of his message to the Christians at Colossae and the heart of his message to us today. As you therefore 
have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, comma. You know, when, when um, Reverend Murphy was here, she said the period is like by the grace of God. I think that comma can be like no matter what comes your way, <laughs> no matter the struggles, no matter the holes that pop up in our lives, as you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, comma, continue to live your lives in him. Continue to walk in in Christ is actually what the Greek says. Continue to walk, which says move, which says don't just sit still and atrophy in your faith, but move. But being a Christian is hard. Following Jesus is hard, and, and, and there are times in our lives, I know all of us, where we might get off track, where life throws us a curveball. We had like a two and a half year curveball, and for a moment, we lose our way. We lose ourselves, and then that feeling begins to creep back in, that feeling of being incomplete, that sense that there is something missing. The hole opens back up into our heart, and we slip into our old ways, our old selves, and we try to fill that hole with other things, with other people, earthly things, earthly people, earthly ideologies and philosophies and theologies and white cowboy hats that look so dashing on people not named me. And that was happening in Colossae. And so Paul reminded them, hey, you guys, you know Christ. You don't just know Christ. You have what? Received Jesus. Like you have received something and your faith and what he has done for you, stay rooted in that. Stay rooted in your knowledge in Christ, your faith in what he's done for you. You know what it is to find fullness in him. So continue in him. Stay the course. Walk the line like a tree planted by streams of living water. Dig deep in what Epiphras has taught you especially as they were living in this cosmopolitan city on a major trade route like Colossae. It's so easy to be seduced by all those competing philosophies, religions, designs for living. Stoicism was the way of the philosophical elite. It celebrated human understanding, human reason above all else. Look what I can do. Look what I can think. Looming figures like Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, local cults, strange foreign gods, astronomers. Paul's later going to talk about the Jewish Christians and their continued emphasis on the Jewish festivals, laws, and customs as a means of achieving wholeness in God. We still do that today, right? You got to do this, you got to do that, or else you can't achieve Christ. You can't be like Christ. You can't experience Christ unless you follow all these rules. That's why Paul says to them, see to it that no one, no person on earth takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to who? Christ. And then hear this. For in Him, in Christ, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in Him who is the head of every ruler and authority. So in whom do all heavenly things dwell? Who? Christ. And in whom do we come to fullness? Christ. Not the Lone Ranger, not Tonto, not Silver, Hi Ho. Who remembers Tonto's horse? Scout, yeah, it's a Palomino, right? Yeah, yeah. None of that. None of these earthly things that we create and design and celebrate so often. Paul knows. And Paul reminds the Colossians that when we feel like something is missing, when we feel incomplete, when we don't feel whole, where do we find wholeness? In Christ. That's where we found it before. That's where we can find it again. But but I don't know about y'all. I'm I'm, I'm pretty good at at finding fullness in in, in, in other places. My daughter bought me this this morning because she loves me. I also had to Venmo her. The cost of the drink. (laughs) I know I joke about my relationship with the Green Mermaid, but it's my go-to when I'm feeling stressed, when I'm feeling out of sorts. 
in, incomplete. Like drinking my matcha latte will somehow fill the emptiness inside. And it hasn't always been a matcha latte that I reached for. But none of it did the trick. Like I could somehow buy fullness. It, it never worked. So we try other things. I've tried, I've tried the, I've, look at this, this is just insane. And this ain't even the like one one hundredth of it. Like, I, 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 I've tried to find wholeness um, going the, f- <laughs> the physical route, right? <laughs> Maybe that's what's missing is, is exercise, filling the hole with the right, right foods. So, so I, checked out, I checked out this guy. Look, the Daniel plan. I, I was like, all right, look, Daniel knows a little bit of something, and, and so does Rick Warren. Like, he's a good pastor. He's been preaching forever, so he's got to know what's good for me. And, and all the doctors he consulted with, uh, they've all been on Oprah. And, well, if they're good enough for Oprah, right, then, then they're good enough for all of us. And, and so I, tr- I, I tried that. Well, I didn't really try it. The book still, it's like six years old. It still looks pretty good, though, doesn't it? That's not my highlights, but I like that. I make it look like I highlighted. But it's just pre-highlighted, right? And then, and then I thought, all right, you know what? I'll, I'll try to get my body in shape. So then I get something like Con Body, right? This is, I didn't try it. Again, it's a pretty new book if you'd like. Um, it, it's exercise like an inmate. I bought this because I was preaching about this guy. He's got an amazing story. And I thought, hey man, I could get in shape just like this guy. And I shouldn't have, I should have known when it said boot camp on the second line like that. <laughs> I don't even own a pair of boots. So I can't go to that camp. And I thought, like, maybe organize. I'll get organized, and that'll get me. And so I hung out with Marie Kondo, and, right, yeah, there were, we had no sparks, <laughs> she and I. And, 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 and the minimalists, right, like, they did not fill me up. <laughs> they weren't enough. Um, and so then I, like, I spent, a, I spent a year with this guy, Michael Hyatt. He's awesome, the vision-driven leader, and I was going to have my best year ever, and I'd be free to focus, and, and, and then I was like, oh, wait, man, I'm just like flying all over the place trying to find these things out, so, so then I was like, maybe, maybe I, I need to just get myself together, and I'm pinging from thing to thing, so maybe I need to get my ADD in check, so <laughs> I, I got a workbook. It, it said, Mastering My Adult ADHD. Unsurprisingly, this did not work. <laughs> um, I have two master's degrees, and neither of them is mastering my ADHD. And maybe that's why I have two master's degrees that just keep going back. And, and then I'm like, okay, wait, um, I, I need to, I, I haven't talked about my faith much, so I need to get my faith, that's where it all starts, right? I need to get my faith together, so I thought I'll live biblically for a year, or maybe I'll do spiritual disciplines. I need to pray. I want to get all these books about how to pray every day. And man, my finances are off. I got a spiritually of fundraising. And I, the church is crazy. We got to get this thing together. Make or break your church in 365 days. Uh, <laughs> I need God dreams for my church. Flipping church, right? There you go. <laughs> Sticky faith, launch kit. Failure to launch on that one. Um, I got total church, everyday church, I got church morph, I got holy, holy conversations, Lord. And and then I got the Sabbath, clearly haven't read that one. Uh, I got, I got, I got a bookshelves full of me trying to fill holes in my soul, trying to find who I am. I've tried podcasts and Pinterest and Bible studies and right now media. I try music and movies and the right clothes only to find out they're the wrong trousers. You see, I've tried so many different outfits. I've tried philosophies and ideologies. I've tried on philosophers and I've tried on self-help and self-pity. I've tried on lifestyles. I've tried on libraries. I've been cramming all these things into this empty space, this hole inside of me, like something's missing inside of me. And yet for all the cramming that I do, the hole is still there. And it occurred to me as I was reading Colossians this week that my Lone Ranger costume kit It wasn't the first identity that I tried on in my life that really wasn't mine. That wasn't who God created me to be. And it wasn't the last identity 
that I would try on, the last mask I'd put on, trying to find who I'm supposed to be. Not by a long shot. I've spent a lifetime trying on different costumes, different books, different attitudes, different affectations, trying to buy my way into happiness and fullness and and joy. And yet for all of that, there's always been something missing. No matter how much I bought into what someone was telling me, I still felt incomplete. It's like all these things the world is advertising that promise to make me into someone better, smarter, richer, stronger, prettier. It's like they forgot to add the disclaimer that wholeness, fullness, is not included. And in this big, complicated mess of failed attempts at self-actualization, at personal growth, even spiritual growth, in this big pile of failure, I lost sight of the truth. I I couldn't find the only thing I ever really needed. I mean, the irony is not lost on me that I lost track of the actual Bible (laughs) in my mad scramble to read what a bunch of other people think about the Bible. You ever do that one? (laughs) Like I spend more time reading what people think and tell want to tell me about the Bible than the actual Bible. Like I spend more time memorizing Shane Claiborne's words than I do memorizing Jesus's words. And instead of saying, hey man, have you read Colossians lately? I say, hey man, have, have, you, have you read Church Morph lately? <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I lost track of the Jesus in Scripture in the midst of all this other stuff. When really, I mean, it's what Paul says to the Colossians, it's simple. Like, while I'm out there buying up a world of fatal, dr- failed dreams, fatal dreams, those two, and the world, by the way, right now is selling more failed dreams than ever. Sometimes I think, like, our economy is just based on people selling what are inevitably going to be failed dreams to us. Like, those holes in our souls, that's what's driving our economy. Because we're just trying to buy and find the thing that's free. And Paul says it. It's easy. As you therefore have received, you've already received it, Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your dreams, not in all these other, let's see if I can do it, in all these other things. Continue to live your dreams in Him. Like, you've all received everything you need. So stop ordering things from Amazon. Even with free shipping, it still costs too much. (laughs) Especially when the cost has already been paid. Quit trying to live other people's lives. Just focus on living your life in Him the way you did when you first met Him. Simple. It it might not be easy, (laughs) but it's simple. And all these books and podcasts and programs and systems and methods and Pinterest things that you pin on, (laughs) they're just complicating things. They might be piling on more work, but they aren't filling the holes. Remember, you never find fullness And those man-made philosophies, those man-made theologies, those man-made laws and rules and systems. When you died with Christ in baptism, Paul says, when not just your, 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 your flesh, but your whole self, he says, was circumcised, right? Circumcision of the heart. Paul says all those man-made attempts at fullness, they're washed away. They're clean. 
You know, they've been nailed to the cross. Actually, when, in, in, in the Greek, when he says, take off your clothes, when you took off your clothes before, it, it, when you take off your sins, it's the same word as you're taking off your clothes. You're taking off all those things, where, all those costumes, all those things that we're wearing when we go into the water and we come out our true selves again. And then inevitably we start putting on the, the masks and the handkerchiefs, not the hats because we didn't get it. I think that we're emptied in baptism to make room for the fullness of the one who has come to dwell in us, to abide in us, to tabernacle in you, that your very being might be a temple for Christ in the world. And that is why Paul says to the Colossians, and he says to us, for in Christ, the whole fullness of deity, the whole fullness of of God dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him. You find your fullness in who? Christ, who is the head of every ruler and authority. So do all heavenly things dwell in these books? No, they dwell in whom? Christ. Will we all come to fullness in, in, in all these books? No. We come to fullness in whom? Christ. Christ. Amen.